Hi, I thought we'd take a look at my Alesis M1 Active 520 USB Studio Monitor Speaker. Um, these are the speakers that I use for all of my video editing, have done for uh, many years now, and I like it not only because they are uh, small and compact, the 520 uh, means it's a 5 inch main driver here, but I like it for the fact that A, it's got the volume uh, and power switch on the front, and I'm always uh, using this, and I don't have to dick around with like the software or an external box or anything like that. Um, it's got the headphones on the front, which I uh, use for uh, podcasting, and uh, it's USB, as the name says. It's actually a USB interface as well, which is handy. It just means that there's uh, you know one less box on my bench. I don't need an external DAC or uh, to use the crappy uh, sound card inside the computer. So. I rather like these. Um, yeah, there's not too many like uh, USB monitor speakers on the market, and they don't make this one anymore. They do make the 320 USB, which is a three-inch uh, driver version. But uh, anyway, and I do like the fact that it uses uh, uh, nice beefy XLR connectors for the um, to go to the other speaker. All of the driver is inside this one. The other one is uh, just a speaker. It's got bass boost and uh, a rear port on the thing and also uh, tonally I really like these because I do video editing where like speech is everything like I don't have any music I don't do any music editing or anything like that and uh, apparently the crossover in these has been designed to avoid the mid-range of the uh, voice so you know they're potentially a bit better than uh, some others on the market in terms of uh, voice reproduction and stuff like that anyway I think they're a cool little monitor speaker but there's a problem with this one and that when I turn it on, it's supposed to have a funky blue light across here. There's obviously a lead backlight, and this is just like a uh, light pipe. Um, and it's supposed to turn red when it clips, but I, I don't think I've ever seen that because I've never overdriven uh, these things. But yeah, it's supposed to have a funky blue light. So, but it doesn't anymore. But it still sounds fine, but I thought I'd just crack it open because I haven't opened these before. So we'll do a teardown and... Have a look what's wrong with that uh, lead light, shall we? Now, what I'm interested in is that little board tucked up under there that has the uh, power switch and the connection to the uh, lead and the lead pipe. So we'll remove the knob there and uh, we can get down into the nut down in there. Oh, I need a socket driver for that. Yeah, a pair of needle nose pliers, she'll be right. Actually, as it turns out, I'm not the least bit interested in that. It doesn't have the uh, lead. There's actually another uh, <laughs> lead here actually going down into the same hole down in there, which goes to the lead. So that's the one I'm interested in. Oh. It's a uh, dual color, only two wires going in, but there's both red and blue. Nothing there, but if we Put it backwards, then there you go, it lights up red. But blue is the problem. Hmm, can we get that off? Alright. Oh, yeah. Ta da! Oh, we're in like Flynn. Alright, the leads have to be tucked up and hot snotted all within there, which is a bummer, and they just go into the uh, light pipe but um yeah i assume it's just a uh, dual back-to-back -back, um a back-to-back -back red and blue lead okay so what i've done is just uh put the power supply into constant current uh, mode five volts uh compliance or output voltage that's just the uh, technical term and 10 milliamps so because the uh, 121 multimeter is uh, only capable of a couple of milliamps due to the two point aha uh -huh. there we go blue Ta -da! no problems whatsoever if i change the polarity red so there you go what current will it operate down to and if i set it to one milliamp which is the absolute <laughs> minimum resolution of the power supply obviously having the uh i think it's about 2.2k uh, or something in series with the um inside the multimeter wasn't enough to light that up that's a rather weird one so that's okay, unless there's a, like an intermittent contact I'm not seeing. Um, our problem seems to be down there. There's our connector for the driving that lead. So there's a little little uh, TO92 tranny next to that. Is that uh, 
Is that driving that thing and uh, switching the polarity? Hmm, that could be the culprit. Hey, I just decided to uh, plug it back in. Sweet, look, look, there we go. It's come good. Is it just a dicky connection, but it went off on its own. Yeah, it's, oh, no, no, it's fading, is it? Yeah, there's something, something not good there. I swear it was brighter before. Is that my imagination? Something weird's going on. So I, it's, I don't think it's a, it's not a connection issue. Let me give it a bit of a, give it a bit, a bit of a wiggle. Yeah, no, nothing to do with the connections. So it's got to be electrical. This sucker's electrical. Yeah, it's definitely switching off and on. It was off a second ago, trust me. And it just flickered back on. And there is some like, some sort of flickering in there as well. So I don't know, I, it depends on how they're driving this thing. We might have to reverse engineer the circuit, but oh, we've got some blue there, just switched off. What I'm doing now is actually um, overloading the thing to the hilt. I'm feeding in a uh, one kilohertz sine wave and overload and I don't even get the red clip in anymore but um, I'm not dri driving the speaker here but I was actually driving the speaker before at uh, full volume and I didn't get the red clip so I think um, that part of it is buggered too but yeah it just switched off and on zippity doodah this thing like changes all the time that's the problem with uh uh, like faults like this if you can't consistently reproduce it then it can often be hard to track them down but we know there's something wrong with that uh, uh, lead driver thing both it looks like both the power and the clip aspect to it so it's time to start measuring stuff so what we're going to do is take a look around uh, this op amp down here the drive transistor the three pins there's our connector that goes off to the lead you can see that the collector and the emitter directly goes across the lead so it actually uh, shorts that out but it basically goes across a diode here into um, pin 7 of this uh, op amp here so the op amps powered from 30 volts there the interesting thing about this is that there's it's actually switched off at the moment if I switch it on there we go um it's exactly the same so that op amp is always uh powered up because this is not a mains power switch it's basically a uh, soft power switch it's directly across the lead and that's when it's um oh, so this is when it's off it's uh, minus 1.5 and then it's minus uh 2.9 basically when i switch that power on so um, in theory, that should be enough, but I've got the lead disconnected at the moment. And I've got the lead connected, switch it on. There you go, 2 volts. It's obviously uh, not enough to drive that blue lead. There's something in the circuitry that's uh, starving the supply, the current supply on this thing, I think. And that's why we can't see it. Just measure a diode up here. 0.7. No worries. That uh, goes through to the base of the driver tranny down there um that's not a problem because it's all in circuit but we're basically getting that uh 0.7 yes i know the battery uh indicators on here i know what i'm doing i'm a professional welcome to dave cad reverse engineering please excuse the crudity of the model didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it um here's our two leds there are uh, back to back like this anode cathode i've done them with the uh, correct polarity blues opposite polarity like that one side of them's going down to ground uh that transistor there actually uh shorts them out we'll see why in a second and uh it goes through a lead dropper resistor here to an op amp now i've actually uh measured this and when the power is uh both off and on we've got negative uh 15 volt basically saturated 14.7 it's saturated at the negative rail so that is the correct polarity if this is not minus 15 volts the lead dropper that's the correct polarity for the blue lead relative to ground here because this is ground is actually a higher potential than minus 15 volts the blue lead it's going to light up simple and likewise if uh, clipping happens i haven't uh like reverse engineered all this side this is obviously coming from the clipping uh circuit and as soon as it uh, clips and wants to turn on the lead it then drives this high like this and that just drives the red lead like that down to ground so plus 15 volts boom 
and, and the blue uh, lead is um, uh, back to front, but it's not presented with a high voltage because it's going to be limited by the uh, 1.8 volts on the lead, the drop on the uh, red lead here, and vice versa. So they don't damage each other. So that's no problem at all. So what's this uh, tranny doing here? Well, I haven't uh, seen where this goes off to, but somewhere on the uh, power board. So obviously, when you uh, switch the power off, this actually uh, turns on the transistor and then shorts it out. Oops, sorry, I forgot to draw in. That's actually a Zener, like that. Otherwise, um, <laughs> the polarity would be backwards on this. This has to have a breakdown in order to do that. Anyway, uh, when you switch the thing off, it just uh, turns on this transistor via this uh, pull up here and then just switches uh, both LEDs off. It doesn't matter what the op amp can be doing. It can be flapping around in a breeze over here, um, oscillating to buggery, and it's not going to matter because this transistor is going to permanently short out both of those LEDs. So when you turn it off, the LEDs go, both LEDs go off. So this is uh, pretty basic stuff. I mean, we could actually remove that transistor and it should work because it's basically going, you know, negative plus minus uh, 15 volts there. If we actually suck that out, then um, it, it, it's like, it must work. So I've actually measured the output voltage here. It is 14.7 volts, but that's without the lead plugged in. So let's plug the lead in. And, and if we still get 14.7 volts here, minus 14.7 volts, that blue lead must come on. If it doesn't, then there's obviously something wrong with this uh, transistor here, which is um, uh, maybe partially on and then causing that blue lead to go off. And that kind of makes sense because we've been seeing it going all higgledy piggledy. So, you know, it's something, something in here. I suspect it's not the op amp. Let's measure that. There you go. Minus 13 volts and the blue lead, I can assure you, is not on. So therefore, that transistor must be conducting and uh, causing that uh, blue led to switch off. We should be able to see that here if we actually probe the base voltage. Minus 1.3. Huh. That's interesting. What's going on? I'm going to suck out that tranny. Here we go. Got it out. Let's test it. Base emitter. There we go, 0.76, and uh, the good thing about the 15 volt uh, diode range here is we can swap that around and actually test the reverse breakdown, the emitter base breakdown voltage. Data sheet says 6, but it's a highly variable number. There you go, 7.7, .7. so it breaks down, so it's okay. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I sucked that transistor out, and... The output of the op amp is minus 13.2 volts, and I've got the lead connected, and there's the voltage across the lead. There it is there. Minus 1.9, and the blue lead's not on. What gives? There's no other path. There, that's ridiculous. Well, you can see it yourself here. There's the uh, ground. There's the, the, which is the lead. Here's the other side of the lead. It goes over to this trace here. There's no transistor in there. Remember, this is a single side of board. Goes into a dropper resistor and through to pin 7 of the op amp. And pin 7 of the op amp is minus 13.2 volts. Relative to the blue lead should turn on. It doesn't. Well, I think I'm done. There's nothing wrong with that circuit at all. The only conclusion I can come to is that there's something wrong with the lead in there. Wow. Wow. Yes, I've measured the resistor. It's 1.5K. 13 volts. Do the math. There's the mongrel. It's embedded inside the plastic like this. So, it's some sort of... I don't know, it's almost like... A, oh, no. Is that... Is that epoxied in there? Or something? Anyway, it had all hot snot around here. I've cut all that off. But yeah, it's, um, it's well and truly stuck in there. It's integrated in the whole thing. Obviously, the rest of it's just a uh, light pipe. Um, so I, there's one thing I can try. Um, rather than just bodging another lead, what I can do is just uh, snip the leads here, actually reverse them, and then I'll have a red power lead all the time and a blue one otherwise. Um, for, well, a non-blue one, because there's something wrong with the blue. I mean... It, it could be something, you know, something weird going on with the die. I don't know, a little micro-attachment, a little bond wire um, issue or something like that. 
No idea. Anyway. This is fascinating. Watch this. I'm going to put another 1K resistor in parallel with the 1K on there. So power's turned on. You notice that the lead's off? Like, nothing I physically do to it can make it come on. But watch this. I'm going to put 1K across there, and it's on, right? And I disconnect it, and it, see, it stayed on for a bit. And I actually got it before I got it to, like, latch on. There's something weird that's happened with that lead. Oh, and it stays on, it stays on, it flickers, it flickers, right? And I've monitoring the voltage. Um, the voltage is the same. Look, flickers on and off. I'm not touching anything. It's not... Oh. No, it's, it's not physical. Look, it's electrical. Wow. The last thing I would have expected. Inside, okay, if it's blowing, fair enough. But uh, some sort of electrical problem that we can solve by basically putting more current through it, like that. So to fix this, I could just technically change the value of that resistor and everything's hunky-dory, but like, it's just gonna get worse. Like it could certainly get worse, almost guaranteed. Look at that, I, what? Unbelievable fault. Seriously, how lucky are we to find a fault like that? That is just, that's insanely rare. So after all that, there really wasn't um, a problem. I don't think there's a problem with the circuit at all. Yeah, and of course, you know, you go down the rabbit hole because, like, we were able to light the lead up and, you know, you just assume, okay, it's connected. It's not a physical, you know, jiggled the wires and stuff. It was fine and dandy. So you know the lead works, so it must be a problem with the lead driver. So you go down that rabbit hole chasing a bloody red herring and then you come back up the rabbit hole only to find the damn lead's at fault. Unbelievable. This thing is hilarious. It's just, it's off. It's on. <laughs> there you go. Back to front. Got a nice red power lead. I like it. Um, yeah, the blue clip lead. Um, who cares? I don't use the clip functionality anyway. Uh, yeah, I could have uh, like wired in a proper blue lead, but then physical dicking around and all that sort of stuff. It was easier just to Reverse the damn thing. And yes, I know that the blue lead in reverse is actually protecting the reverse voltage of the red lead. So that may be a problem in the future. But now nah, I'll deal with that. Maybe I could add like another uh, lead inside in parallel on the wires or, or something like that. Um, but I don't care. I like having this as a red. It differentiates it as, you know, one that's been hacked. And I soldered that poor innocent tranny back in, and sorry, I suspected you, and there you go. I've got a nice blue, red power lead. I like it. Fixed. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So there you go. I hope you liked that one. We were very lucky to find a, like a rather obscure problem like that. Something wrong inside the lead. If you've seen this, had any good ideas, like I've seen them fail inside maybe like an intermittent bond wire contact but it seemed to be electrical maybe cast pass current through it it's making like you know like a little uh diode connection inside like a little point contact diode connection or or something's really you know there's a something physically wrong inside that thing that manifests itself um in terms of current you put more current through it it's fine it sort of stays there it almost like latches kind of thing for a bit and then uh switches back on so that was absolutely fascinating and if you remember back in the video we when we were passing current through that thing lighting it up that kind of gave us an indication it didn't work um uh, down at those lower currents it probably should have like you know <laughs> like sort of uh, smelled a rat back then but like hey the lead came on Let's, you know, in, in a hurry, let's follow the circuit. You know, boom, that, that, that problem's checked. So it's real obvious in hindsight, isn't it? Um, but I, <laughs> that's where it leads you. And yes, ironically, I'm going to go edit this video right now using this puppy. So if you like that and found it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.